Rick Porcio at topvelocity.net. 3x pitch biometrics here of Sam Adams from 3x Velocity Camp. We got him at 80, he's on 80, 82. Take him out of his leg lift before back leg drive. Okay, we can look some of the hip positions. We can see the drive hip is <clears throat> internally rotated, only 28 degrees of abduction. So we need to do better holding what we, you know, torsion, what we talk about where we want the drive leg staying externally rotated, so this direction. Uh, you can see you're already coming up on the foot, so this is really a collapsing movement that's occurring. So, oh, wrong one. so we're trying to delay rotation as long as we can, and, and the key to delaying rotation is holding this knee out in external rotation, so you can see that knee is going down the arm is cocking back which is good we can see that back knee and the arm cocking up so the relationship between the internal rotation of the back knee and the the arm cocking so this going down and this going up is good i like that relationship it's just happening too early uh, which is not allowing a lot of linear our generation of linear power so we want to sit in this position here longer and just keep riding the hips more forward and down at the same rate. We, the, the more we can take the hips forward and down, the more linear momentum we're gonna build. So the more we can just keep going here with the knee and an externally rotated position that way, the more linear energy we're building. And then we bring in rotation. Uh, so if we start rotating out of the gate, which is happening, we don't have time to build linear power. Okay. So what we'll see is, if we look at the kinematic sequencing, you're going to see your glove side. So your hips are peaking as you're going into front foot, which is the red dot. But you see the blue dot, which is the glove side peaking earlier before it. That's pulling... So really that's helping create rotation. We don't want the glove side to create rotation. We want the trunk to drive it. So, I mean, there is a delay, I think, because you were, you timed the arm cocking against internal rotation of the back leg. You have a good delay or even hip to shoulder separation. So if I, if I look at your hip line and shoulder line, get an indication of that, you can see there's some separation. And that's because you timed your arm, your internal rotation, your back knee to your arm cocking really well, and it gave you that delay. But the problem was, you just it happened so early, you didn't have any energy, uh, you didn't build that linear energy behind it. You know, so and you can see your back foot. See on your back foot, it just pops up and turns over. So there's no actual drive from the back leg. You're just rotating. So it's just very rotational delivery, but good timing, lack of energy, and that glove side's pulling due to that lack of energy. So when you hit front foot strike here and, and your arm cocks, we have, like I said, we have some separation. But if we look at the pelvis and chest position, we can see the pelvis is contralateral about um, six degrees or 11 degrees, the trunk about six degrees, um, which is fine. And then as you go into shoulder rotation, it goes to chest goes to 33 so the it becomes excessive so when we go past 25 when we tuck or we lean towards the glove side it becomes excessive where torques go up in the arm but ball speed stops going up so potentially if you would have landed at your six here or five or six and you had more linear power behind that back leg drive you wouldn't have continued to pull off with that glove side that glove that glove peak that we saw in your kinematic sequence, which is just more proof that you're being very rotational. Okay. And what you're going to see is here at maximum external rotation, there's no forward tilt. So yeah, sorry, we we're in that. If we look at the forward chest, it's only at five degrees. And you're going to see a lot of high velocity guys where the trunk is pushing out, you know, 20, 30 degrees at this point. And then as they go to pitch release, you know, they're at 45, you're at 
you know, they're 50, 45, 50, you're, you know, 38, um, somewhere around 35, 38. So you just, your trunk is more rotating. That's the other thing too. Your arm is getting extended. It's because your trunk is just still spinning, which is harder on the elbow too. So if your trunk was going forward, it wouldn't want it to fully extend. It would, would have wanted to turn over early. Yours is extending because of all that rotation. Even too, your front leg is, um, actually your front leg is, it, at pitch release, hasn't getting extension. It gets extension as you keep rotating. But you can see there's not a lot of back leg, or I mean, there's not a lot of front leg, just like there wasn't a lot of back leg drive. So I think the sequencing is, is decent. It's just the, you know, you're, you're, you don't have the linear energy behind it. So if we look at your speeds, your hip speeds are at 700 degrees per second, trunks up to 1100. Those aren't too bad. Um, the, these aren't really linear speeds, but these are overall speeds on the right here. Um, you can see your, your hip is peaking in rotation way before it, it peaks in overall speed. Uh, and your trunk is not too far away. So if we look at the linear aspects of it, or are these, that's not really linear, but overall speed aspects of it, the hip and trunk speeds are really peaking together. So in angularly, because you delayed the arm cocking, we're seeing a delay in hip to trunk speeds. But in overall speeds, we're not. We're pretty much seeing, um, except till, till we see a little dip and then pick up at pitch release, we're seeing those pretty much going off at the same time. So even the point is, even though you're, you're, you're delaying your trunk a, a bit from your hip, you just don't have enough power moving through your body towards the target that in just overall force production or, or let's say kinetic energy, which is really the right graph, there it's not showing that much of um, a, a separation of that energy. That energy is pretty much kind of coming together, uh, but as it moves up the chain. So ultimately, getting more energy before your back leg rotates and in sequencing it the same way you are um, would, would significantly separate this kin kinetic energy um, and, and, and also be significant to, vol to velocity. So basically, focus on delaying rotation. We've got to delay the rotation of the back leg, hold torsion longer, and then we've got to build more linear energy before rotation occurs. And if you can still sequence it the same way, you're gonna see a lot more trunk energy going forward, a lot more velocity at the end of the chain.